Hey, hello, what's up, guys? It's Jamie, aka the Fun Economist, coming at you guys today with the second edition of Trading to the Top Revenge of the Spurs. First things first, I want to thank you guys for the awesome feedback on the first episode. If you did happen to miss that episode, I will leave a link down in the description, or I'll link it somewhere on the screen right now. In addition, I'm going to be doing two things a little bit differently from now on, uh, per your suggestions down in the comments. Uh, the first is that I'm going to be giving myself a minus two minute punishment if I concede a goal. That will prevent me from just going on all out attack and trying to get goals to get the five minutes. That way, it makes it so I have more incentive to play good defense. Second, I'm going to be showing you guys my trade pile after I'm done trading, so you can have a better idea of how I did. Like I said last episode, I'm going to be doing two games per episode, and then corresponding to that episode, I'm going to be playing another two games uh, while you guys are not watching. Uh, so to fill you guys in on what happened in those two games, uh, we won both of them, so we are now 4-0. Uh, both of them ended up being rage quits. Uh, Erickson put in two outstanding performances. I think he's on five goals now, making him the club leader, and I think he's still on two assists, so he's joint tied uh, with three, two other people, I believe. Also, some notable performances. Buga had an outstanding debut. Uh, his pace and his athleticism is really, really helpful. One thing that I noticed is that our goalkeeper, Al Shamari, is absolutely horrendous. Like, really, really really bad. What a day! If we get any upgrade points this episode, I think he's probably going to be one of the first ones out. Also, I've noticed that we have a bit of a fitness problem. I probably shouldn't have uh, used two upgrade points to get those silver cards. Hindsight is 2020, but I probably should have spread them out so that we can get more bodies to rotate in. As we progress in the future here, I'll be spreading out the uh, upgrade points a little bit more. And with that, assuming that we can find a game, let's get into our first one. So our first opponent in Division 9 is going to be Bromley Rangers. He's got a pretty typical starter team with some Argentinian links on the side. Moving into the first chance here, Holmes plays the ball into the middle. He eventually finds his way to Ericsson, who beats one man, looks for the near post finesse, but is blocked away. A short while later, after a bit of random dribbling with his goalkeeper, he turns and puts it in his own net. Not really sure why he did that, but it put us up 1-0 in the match. Shortly after, not surprisingly, Bromley Rangers quits out. Now, I'm not going to count this game in terms of trading minutes, and instead I'm going to play two extra games, but nonetheless, he gives us the win and a 1-0 start in Division 9. Our next opponent in Division 9 is GTA 5. Not really sure why he's got a left back at striker, but who knows, maybe he knows something that I don't. With the first chance of the game, Erickson plays a lovely over-the-top through ball to Holmes, who looks for the near post finesse, but it's blocked away. Moving on to the 19th minute here, Erickson receives the ball in the middle of the field, does a heel to heel flick that doesn't really go to plan, but he finds himself in some open space and puts it away at that near post, giving us our first seven training minutes of the episode. On to the 31st minute here, Erickson making some men miss in the middle of the field with some skill moves, but then gets promptly hacked down. From the resulting free kick, Erickson lines up to take the 32-yard strike, but of course, in typical FIFA fashion, he puts a man on the line and blocks it away. A short five minutes later, he lines up a shot, but Al Shamari is able to parry it wide using every single inch of that 5'11 frame. From the resulting corner, he plays it to the back post where he catches our defender sleeping and Ramil Mayor is able to head it home past the flailing Al Shamari. Unfortunately, that goal just before the half means that we lose two minutes of trading time. On to the second half, Sloganak finds Ericsson at the top of the box. He goes for the far post finesse, but it just goes wide hitting the post. On to the 70th minute now with Ericsson at the top of the box. Works some space for a shot, but it's deflected away by his keeper. He doesn't properly clear it though. It falls back to Ericsson who works some space for a shot, but yet again, he fails to capitalize. Late in the game now, Holmes finds Romeo on a run through. He looks for that near post shot and it goes in. So a huge goal for Romeo, putting us up 2-1 late in the game. And since it's a debut goal, it's going to add seven minutes of trading time. Unfortunately, our celebrations were a bit premature as he comes down directly off the kickoff, crosses it to the far post and heads it past our questionable goalkeeper, tying up the game at 2-2 and subtracting two minutes worth of trading. What the but Ericsson is not going to let us go down that easily. Off the resulting kickoff, he comes down, beats a couple players on the dribble, and wins a free kick just about 30 yards out. Lining up the free kick, he takes it. It's just a bit too high, cannoning off the crossbar, but look who's under it. That's right, Sloganak's going to volley it home. So not only does that give us an extra five minutes for the goal, but we are also going to get five more minutes for the win. We get another five minutes for our win streak, and we remain undefeated, sporting a 2-0 record in Division 9. So after the excitement of that last game, we've had to make a couple of changes before getting into the second game of this episode, most notably of which is that we're bringing off Romeo, Holmes, and Buga, and then bringing on the Swedish striker Jewo and that Argentinian trio in the bottom right hand of our formation. So now looking at the third opponent of this episode, he's working with the 4-5-1 formation. He's got a mostly gold team, but not a whole lot of chemistry. Onto the first chance of the game, he crosses it into that far post where his player gets a pretty solid value on it, but surprisingly, Al Shamari makes a fantastic save. The pickup action 
mentioned again here late in the first half where Ericsson lines up the far post shot, but it just hits off the post and eventually gets cleared away. That's pretty much it for the first half. In terms of number of chances created, we were doing pretty well, but in terms of their quality, we were lacking. Directly off the kickoff, Ericsson's looking to change that. He makes one man miss with a couple of ball rolls. He runs past a couple of more and nears the 18. As he nears the 18, he does a little bit of LTRT dribbling, beats two more with a little bit of a spinter, nears the 18, and finishes at that near post with a finesse shot. So a fantastic goal from Ericsson, giving us seven more minutes and putting us in the lead 1-0. Shortly after, J. Will gets down that left-hand side, cross it in Jimenez, who heads it home beautifully, giving us a 2-0 lead and five extra minutes of trading time. And that's all she wrote for this game, capping off a fantastic set of performance performances by our team this episode, it's going to mean that we maintained our perfect undefeated record of 7-0 and our great start of 3-0 in Division 9. It's also going to mean, of course, that we're going to get 5 extra minutes of trading for the win and then another 7 minutes of trading for our 7 game win streak. Alright, so it looks like after everything's been totaled up, we're going to have 50 minutes of trading, not half bad. But of course, before we get into it, we have to select my trading method, so let's do that now. And yes, if you were wondering, I do have a new haircut. I'm recording this on a different day. Also, you'll notice that I've added a fifth option to the wheel. It's going to be the choose any method option. It's pretty self-exploratory. Alright, time to spin the wheel. Please, anything but the contract trading method. Oh dear. All right, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna do this, being that training with non-rare gold contracts per like the method is just not an option right now. So I think it's fair, as long as I'm trading with contracts, I think it's still technically the contract trading method. So I'm gonna look to trade with rare gold contract, maybe get them at 200 coins and then list them up for 250. Don't know how effective that's gonna be, but let's see if I can make it work. I'll see you in 50 minutes. So while I'm trading in the background here, let's talk about a couple of things. First off, why didn't I want to get that contract trading method? Well, according to my original method, it consisted of buying non-rare gold contracts at 150 a piece off a bid, and then turning them around and just selling them at 200 on a bin. It was really easy, you couldn't mess it up, you could basically teach it to a baby. And that's a really good method early in the cycle of FIFA's life. However, right now, that's not the best method because demand for contracts has gone down. However, as traders we know whenever there's a shift in demand, there's definitely an opportunity for us to come in and make some profit. And as I found out, that opportunity came in the form of buying and selling cold contracts. Now I don't want to spoil the surprise of how I did, but I will tell you that if I had more money, I could have easily flipped about 10k worth of profit in just under an hour. Obviously that was limited by the the amount of money that I had, but I found this to be an extremely effective trading method. While we're talking about consumables and other life cycle changes in FIFA, I should also mention that there's going to be a bunch of other consumables that are going to have shifting demands and there's going to be ways that you can make profit off them. If you guys want to see me do a video on those shifts and or the contract trading method that I just discovered during those 50 minutes, please let me know down in the comments and I'll get right on it. Alright, well it looks like time is... Well, time's not up, actually. I just kind of ran out of money. I still have like 20 minutes to go. Uh, but as you can see, we did pretty darn well. We've got 30 contracts uh, waiting right here in our transfer list. And I think we have another 18 uh, contracts in our club. Let me just check that real quick. Yep, 18 contracts in our club, so a total of 48 contracts waiting to be sold on. I think, from what I've seen, that I can reasonably sell them on for 250 coins at a minimum, and then maybe 300 coins if we're lucky. Like I said before, it's not about how much money I have after the trading time is up. It's about the value of the cards that I have in the club that I can then later go and sell on. Okay, so everything's sold on, and we've been left with 12,637 coins, which means we've made a profit of 2,949 coins, which also means that we have a percent profit of 30.04%, which means we just barely make the 5 point upgrade margin by 0.04%. That's huge because we're going to be able to use those 5 upgrade points to rotate players in and negate some of the fitness problems that we're going to definitely have in the next coming games. Okay, so time to make some new additions to the team. The first player that we're going to be adding is the English center attacking mid from Southampton, Jake Hesketh. He's got some pretty good pace on him, he's got good dribbling and decent passing stats as well, as he's only going to cost us 350 coins. Welcome to the team, Hesketh. So the next player that we're going to be adding is the English center back from Liverpool, Gomez. Um, he's actually 19 years old, so he's almost the same age as me, but he's got a lot of pace on him and some pretty good defending and physical stats. So that combined with the fact that he's actually the cheapest rare bronze center back in the BPL made him a good option. Welcome to the team, Gomez. Our next addition to the team is going to be the 6'6 Danish goalkeeper for Stoke City, Hoggard. He's got some pretty good stats on him for a bronze goalkeeper, and he was definitely one of the cheapest, so welcome to the team. Our next addition to the team is going to be Hendry, the Scottish left back for West Ham. He's got some pretty good stats for a bronze player, and he was definitely by far the cheapest left back in the BPL, so welcome to the team. 
Our final addition to the team is going to be this pacey striker from Leicester City, Dudu, or, or Dodo. I'm actually not sure, um, but he's got some really nice pace on him and was probably one of the cheapest rare bronze players that we could get, so welcome to the team. Okay, so here's a final look at the team with everyone else slotted in. We're going to be on 65 rating with 89 chemistry. The team is starting to come together pretty nicely. We're going to have the Argentinian pair still down in that right-hand corner of the squad, but eventually we will replace them, hopefully, next episode if all goes to plan. All right, so that's pretty much going to do it for this episode of Trading to the Top. We're 7-0-0 in Division 9 with a 3-0 record. We're steaming right through the divisions right now, and the team is only getting stronger. So if you've enjoyed yourself, feel free to leave a like rating. If you haven't, please let me know down in the comments below. All feedback back is greatly appreciated but other than that it's been jamie aka the fun economist keep your trade pals full stay rational and i'll see you in the next video